Hello and welcome to Weebly How To. Today I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to create an awesome Weebly blog post. We'll be creating the post, adding a title, an image, and a photo gallery, as well as some categories that are relevant to the post, and talking a little bit about meta descriptions as they apply to posts on Weebly. So the first step is to log into your Weebly site and click on blog. I'm already on my blog page and I will be creating a tutorial that walks you through how to create a blog on your Weebly website, but not today. So once you're on your Weebly blog page, you'll click new post. And this usually takes a few seconds to load. Now we're, cre now we're welcomed with the new post editor where we begin creating our post. I've already written my article in a Google Doc, which I highly suggest doing when you're writing new articles so that you have a backup copy if anything were to happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a unique title to my post. A few tips and pointers when creating your title is to make it catchy, intriguing, and include one or two of the keywords that you might want your post to show up for. In the case of this, I want people to see my article when they're searching for information about uh, descending the north side of South Sister, which is a mountain here in Central Oregon. So I copied that post title and I pasted it into the title section of the Weebly blog post creator. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add a content widget to this canvas here and go back to my Google document, paste all, copy all of the content, and paste it into the text widget in the Weebly editor. Now for some reason, the uh, content always seems to add a double space between each paragraph, but I think you can easily get rid of that by using the remove formatting function. Nope, it looks like I was wrong, so we'll have to manually remove all of the double spaces here. I guess that's the only caveat to putting your content into a Google document rather than typing it directly into this text editor, but it's always nice, like I had said, to have a backup copy of your content for future reference. Shall you want to maybe put it into a book someday or migrate your content to a different platform? or in the horrible scenario where your uh, Weebly website possibly went down. So one other thing that I really like to do is uh, highlight all of the content and make it at least one size larger. It just makes it easier for your readers to, to read that content. And you do that by clicking selecting all of the content and then using this little plus or minus sign. That will increase the font size or decrease the font size. The next step is to add a, a little image to the left hand corner of the post by simply clicking, holding, and then dragging the image over to the left hand corner so that it shows up as a box in the corner, not as a line item next to your content. Now if I was to drop it here, like this, it's going to push all of my content over to the right as though I wanted a second column. But that's not the look and feel that I'm going for today, so I'm going to delete this image block and go back over here and grab the image widget again and drop it into the left hand corner. What this will do is provide a nice looking spot for an image to pull into your social media posts on Facebook and Google Plus, for example, and give a nice eye-catchy image right when someone looks at your post. So I've saved all of the photos that I want to use on this post today in this folder on my desktop. I suggest you do the same thing when creating a new post. Just create a folder on your desktop and put all of the image into, images into that single folder uh, when you're creating a new post. 
and I've labeled this image here profile image. So I'm going to click this image, drag it from the folder that's on my desktop, and I should be able to just drop it onto this upload image widget that I have here. Let's see if it works properly. And it did. Look at that. Wow. Okay, well the image is obviously a lot larger than I'd like it to be. So I clicked on the image and that brought up this image editing option. So I'm going to click edit image and from here I can do a number of things. I can crop the image, I can add a new image to overlay on top of it, add some funky effects, but we're going to keep it really simple today and just simply resize the image. And to do that you click and hold and then drag this image to the left hand corner and that will dynamically allow the content to wrap around the image. I think that's a pretty good size for the image. And then you just hit save when you're happy with the size. Another cool function that I like to turn on with my uh, post profile images is something called Lightbox. And you simply click on the image to again bring up the image options and then make sure that Lightbox is turned on instead of off. And what this does is provides the users with the ability to um, essentially pop the image open quite a bit larger than they are viewing it now. Now one of the next steps is to select a category or add a new category to your post. And this just organizes your content to make it easier to navigate to and find in the future for users. And we're going to add this post to Awesome Adventures. Uh, what else looks good here? Mountain climbing, because I did go to the top of a 10,000 foot peak during this adventure that I just wrote about. And running. I think those two, three categories are pretty good. So the final step I believe today is to add a photo gallery. And I'm going to add a slideshow by simply clicking on the slideshow widget, holding, and dragging it down to the bottom part of my content. And then we're prompted with a bunch of slideshow options. I really like this one because it provides us with uh, some small thumbnails and the user gets an overview of the images they can expect in the in the slideshow gallery as well as some arrows to thumb through the different photos. So you just select the gallery that you particularly like. In the case of today's demonstration I'm going to use thumbnails on bottom and click continue. Now we just simply upload the images into our slideshow. I'm going to reference this folder again from my desktop that I've saved all the images to. And I'm going to select all the images, click, hold, and drag them into this uh, upload canvas. Now it's just going to take a few seconds, hopefully just a few seconds, to upload all of those images to our slideshow gallery. And this process can take a lot longer depending on how big your image files are. I recommend compressing your images and saving them for web, which will make them smaller than one megabyte. If your images are a lot bigger than that, it oftentimes slows down the load time of your website, and it takes absolutely forever for the images to load into your into your blog posts and you could ultimately spend several minutes just sitting here waiting for the images to load. So now all my images are loaded into the slideshow and I'd like to kind of organize the way in which the images are presented. So for example I want the summit photo to be the first photo that people see 
And I'm going to add a little caption by clicking this comment bubble. I'm going to call this Summit of South Sister Scott and Bluff. And this is going to get the caption of North side of South Sister Rope for Descent. That was a really treacherous section. This is a little action shot. Action shot of Blair running down the mountain. <laughs> and this is Green Lakes with Broken Top Mountain and Mount Bachelor in the background. That's good. A couple descriptions is nice. It gives your readers some context of what the photos are. And let's just say, for example, that um, that we're all happy with the way that this post has been created and laid out. And the final step now is to hit publish live. Well, let's say, for example, that you weren't quite finished and you had to go run and take care of something. In that case, you would just simply hit save to drafts. And this will save your article to a drafts section right here that you can refer back to at a later time to finish up, which is really handy. I've been in many instances in the past where I wanted to write an article, but I only had 10 minutes to work on it. So I saved it to the drafts, came back to it later by just clicking drafts and then clicking on the article. And voila, there it is again. And I think I want to make this just a little bit smaller before publishing it. So, okay. I'm going to go ahead and publish the hazardous descent of the north side of South Sister. Publish. And our new post is published. You can share it directly on Facebook or Twitter, but I believe all that does is shares your primary domain and not the actual blog post URL. So to get the blog post URL, you would click on your primary domain and then click on blog. And then click on the title of the post that you just created. You'll see that the URL changes to scottraleigh.com backslash blog backslash the hazardous descent of the north side of South Sister. Now this is the URL that you will want to share directly on social media, send to your friends and family through email, or refer to in any other instance that you want to share directly to the post that you just wrote. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on how to create a really good Weebly blog post. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them uh, below or contact me at scottraleigh.com. Have a great day.